Hi guys and girls, welcome to the install video for the Motive Reflex Plus port controller on Camaro and CTSV. In this video we'll go through the basic install control box and the wiring harness into the vehicle. The first thing we'll start with is disconnecting the battery. Okay, now that the battery is disconnected on the car, we're going to go ahead and open the reflex box and pull the items out of this box. So first on top is the controller, along with the connector you'll need for the CAN bus. Underneath them, of course, we have our two harnesses. So basically we'll pull these two harnesses out and then we'll lay them out on the table, get them ready to go here. Okay, we're gonna start with the install harness. We'll go ahead and get that opened up and ready to go onto the vehicle. In here, this harness has all the power connections, uh, the connection to the CAN bus and the relay to control the box. So there's a bit of length here. I mean, it's the same harness we use for both the uh, Corvette installation, CTSV, um, or Camaro. So uh, there's, some of them will be a little longer. We'll have to wrap them up in the vehicle as the time goes because the, the Camaro and the CTSV installation here are actually quite easy. Um, everything's pretty close together on this vehicle. Okay, let's go ahead and move on to the vehicle. Next up, we have to get the down to the ECU on the Camaro and CTSV here. So we'll start by removing the cover from the uh, battery post there. We'll get that out of the way. Then next up, we'll just basically lift the lever here. Re there's a release in the front, the catch there. And then we'll flip the lever up and we'll remove the whole fuse box from there. The fuse box will basically open up. You'll be able to lift it off and then we'll flip it up out of the way. We're not actually gonna disconnect anything from it. It'll, it'll come out of the pins from underneath just like that. You can see how it works. And then we'll end up pulling it up and holding it to the side over there. Okay, now we get the fuse box tied up out of the way. The next thing we need to pull out is this connector and this connector. By removing these out of the box, then this box will also flip up out of the way for us to achieve access to the ECU. In these connectors, there will be four points that you have to release. You can see them there, they're kind of light pulls and you just need a small screwdriver and a little bit of uh, help sometimes. Sometimes it takes two, two sets of hands to do it. But once you get them all released, this connector will just lift out. And like I said, we're only gonna remove two of them. That one will be there, we'll move it out of the way. Then this connector, we'll put it out of the way to the other side. And then that frees us up to be able to unbolt the box. Once this box is unbolted, we'll be able to flip it up out of the way. So we'll go ahead and get that unbolted and uh, show you that. We're gonna go ahead and unscrew the fuse box holder. So those two front bolts don't actually have to come all the way out, but it does make it easier to manage it to move it around sometimes if you do remove them all the way. Okay, now we'll go ahead and flip that box up out of there, and it'll also tuck right up beside the other one. We can kind of go up maybe on top of the water tank or something there, and then fortunately, we can see below us what we're looking for, the ECU right there, so we can make our three connections to those X1 and X2 connectors. We pushed a couple of wires out of the way for ourselves, and we're gonna start with the X1 connector, which in this particular case is that furthest down connector. And this X1 connector will have the blue insert inside of it. We see a blue connector down in there and a blue insert. So that's the one we're looking for. Uh, this vehicle already has a flex fuel sensor connected to it there. We see that off the side. So we'll go ahead and take the cap off of this. There we go. And in this one, we're gonna look for pin 39 and pin 40. Um, so we'll remove the release on the end here. Perfect. So we see all our pins in there. We're gonna go ahead and find the ones we need, which are pin 39 and 40. But before we pull those pins out of here though, we're, we have to open up this harness to get ourselves enough length. Um, these two connectors come from different directions on this car. so we have to be able to meet, the two wires have to meet each other at our connector for the uh, Reflex Plus. So JT is gonna go ahead and we're gonna open up this harness. JT, if you wanna stop for a second there, move his hand for a minute. What we're gonna do is we're gonna actually gonna unwrap the harness all the way back to this joint right here. And that will let us have an extra length uh, once we pull those pins out to be able to get where we need to. Okay, we're gonna start here with the blue wire, which is pin 39. And that is our CAN bus high. It should be directly alongside of if you have a flex fuel in there, it'll be the one alongside of it. Okay, 
Okay, now we're going to go ahead and we're going to put in our yellow wire. Okay, that one's locked in. Then we'll go ahead and pull the white wire out beside it, which is pin 40. And like I said, they just have a really small release there. You just need to grab the release. Then pull the pin out. Then right where he pulls that white one out of, we're going to go ahead and install our green wire. And the green wire will be the can low connection. Okay, perfect. That's all done in. So we're basically finished in this connector. We can go ahead and install our lock, blue lock back in. That's in. Okay, cool. So now we've had our two CAN buses, our CAN bus wires pulled out. They're connected to this, and we'll end up running the wire to there for the for the yellow and the blue. So for right now, we'll pull that yellow and the blue wire. We're going to pull them out to about here to give us some extra length. They're white and blue. Sorry. Yeah, white and blue. Then to give us enough length to get in there to do that. Okay, JT is going to go ahead and pull these out for us. Uh, they are a twisted pair, so they will be tied together. You'll be able to see them there. And that's the way you want to keep them. Don't untwist them. Uh, that's for noise purposes in the harness. So, JT will get it out to the end there. Okay, we have our X1 connector. All harness and everything all cleaned up again. So, JT is going to go ahead and put the cap back on that one. And then we'll go ahead and get that put back on the vehicle here. And move on to our X2 connector. There we go. Perfect. Okay, now we'll move on to the X2 connector, which is the center one. Releases the same way. We'll do that. We'll pop the cap off of it. So it doesn't have much, much working room, but we don't need much for this one. We only have to put one wire into this. It's the cam sensor wire. So we'll go ahead and pop the cover off that, and then we can go ahead and get this installed. Okay, this is the black connector. We're going to pull the, the lock out of the pins there. And then we're going to be looking for pin number 39 in this connector, which will be our cam signal. And this cam signal varies uh, on vehicle. Uh, Corvettes, I believe, are green with a black strip on them. Uh, Camaros, at least the newer Camaros we've done, have been uh, white, a white wire. And uh, we'll see which one this is. Okay, so JT is going to go ahead and untape a little bit of the harness right there, just at the very end, so we can get the wire out through the strain point. Not a whole bunch of room to work in that, but it's really all you need to get it done. So that's basically all we need to do. All of our wires are free there. Let's go ahead and get that pin 39 pulled out. So there it is. This one, it is a white wire for the camshaft signal. We get that pulled out of there. Okay, JT's gonna go ahead and put our purple wire in that same place we just pulled the 39 from. Okay, we'll double check from the other side, make sure it's there. Yep, I see it right there. Looks good. All right. All right. Okay, we're going to go ahead and 
put our pin lock back in here. The black connector, the X2 connector. All right, that looks good. It all went together and we see our purple wire coming out. So now we'll go ahead and we'll button the tape up that harness a little bit where the stress relief is and we'll go ahead and put our zip tie in and get our cover back on. Okay, back at it here. All right, we got our both, all our X connectors put back together. We got them attached back to the ECU and what we have left is we have three wires hanging here. We have this white wire back here coming from the X2 connector, which is the CAN bus and, oh, sorry, the CAM shaft. And then these two over here, which are the CAN bus. So when they go into this small connector here that's included with your kit, you're gonna put the CAN, white CAN wire in pin number one and the blue CAN wire in pin number two. So those two are gonna go in like that. Try to move there so you can get the detail. When they go in all the way, you'll see the pin come through the top up there. So you gotta get them in there pretty straight and then you'll see a pin up top. Then finally, pin number three is the camshaft wire and that has to come from the other direction here. And you see why we had to give ourselves a little bit more length to be able to get those in there. Okay, that's it. JT got it buttoned up there. That fit he'll double check to make sure another one will pull out. And again, I'm gonna have him lay that connector flat you see the color encoding on it on the back. It's white with the cam going into pin number three. And if we look at the connector that connects to it, which is right here, this has got the camshaft in pin number three. You see pin three there, and then the yellow, and then the green, which are the CAN bus. So we should have the same connection. Now JT is gonna go ahead and connect that back to connect it together right here now. Let's verify that it makes sense when he puts it in there. It latched in. We see our purple wire going to our wire into the X2 connector. That tells us we have everything wired correctly. So let's go ahead. We'll get the rest of this harness put in and get this system running. Okay, that's kind of the wrap up there for everything at the ECU. You see we kind of laid the wiring here across the top. It's a little snug through there, but we just kind of tie the wires together along with a flex fuel sensor and basically lay the thing on top of there. There's plenty of room underneath here when this uh, other box goes in. Okay, now we've gone ahead and put our injector harness in. You can kind of see it here. So we kind of laid it out to where it needs to be. The injector harness is over here on this side. Um, and then of course, with the reflex, it always passes across the front of the engine. So the short one here is number one. This last one over here is number seven. Always crosses on the front of the engine. And then the short one here is number two. And then of course, in the back, we have number eight. So those harnesses are all in there ready to go together. The harness there where you see we kind of ran it here underneath along with the other wire this is the MAF uh, the MAF adapter so we have that run across the front of the engine as well and we'll have to just just have to tidy this up make sure everything zip tied together nicely the harness runs through we do have the end of the main harness here which is a little long in this car but it's okay uh, there are a bunch of connectors there that we don't need there are auxiliary inputs and outputs and things like that so we're not gonna use any of those the only thing we need is that one big connector there so we left that connector there and basically what we're doing is we're gonna tidy things up and this connector is basically gonna sit right about here because we're gonna set the box on the back of the fuse box. So end of the day, we're gonna put that right there. At the time, we're gonna kind of coil this up and set it back in the fender well or something like that for right now. Uh, we'll get this all put together and then we'll put the uh, fuse box back in place and make the last couple connections. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna put our fuse box base. Let me take a look underneath there first, JT, just to see. So this is our main connector is where it ended up right here. Uh, that will connect to the box. We're actually going to mount the box just with some uh, to the front of this fuse box right here. So with the connector kind of laying right here, it sits by the um, water pump there. We'll set this box into place. Okay, now we'll go ahead and put all the connectors back in. And we'll put the fuse backs back down. Okay, that's all locked in place. So now we still have a couple connections left. They're all sitting up here in the back, which we'll bring up. And these will actually be tucked down into the fender well there. Um, but we'll move them into place, and then we'll go ahead and make those ground and power connections as well before we uh, move on to mounting the box. Okay, we'll go ahead and connect our power up. 
So the power to the box, the red wire, goes onto the same one of these terminals. It really doesn't matter which one it is. We're using the same one that is used for the intercooler pump. So on this box, luckily it's number five. We'll just go ahead and add our terminal on top of that. All right, next up we're gonna go ahead and get that ground wire connected. JT's got the stud right there. I'll go ahead and knock the knot off it. There's actually two ground wires you're gonna connect. Both of them come from that little relay box. Um, and while he's doing that, I'll go ahead, JT. I'll let you connect those two up. Okay, and then while he do that, JT will go ahead and tighten that up. You can see the relay box right over there. We'd use a small zip tie, uh, actually two zip ties, and it holds it over there at the bottom of the frame. And that's where the fuse and the relay box are located. Other than that, the last thing we left to do, we see our main harness coming out right there by the water pump. We're gonna go ahead and mount the box here on the back side of the fuse box, and then we'll get that connected up. On to the USB here. So basically the USB port plugs right in the side of the box. Uh, we already have the other box in the car, so um, I didn't feel it was very useful to show you how to plug it in there. But here on the bench, you can see it's a standard micro USB and a USB port. We just plug it right into the box there. That gives us our connection with a standard USB on the other side, ready to plug into the laptop. Um, at this point, that would finish our installation of this mode of controller box. As a note, we generally don't leave the USB connected. Uh, that's something we just use when we're going to write to the box. Once your initial setup and, and basic calibration for the box is done, you pretty much set and forget with this box. You normally don't need to connect to it again unless you're doing an injector size change or a, a large boost change or some sort of um, fuel a change like uh, to something else. So for the most part, it doesn't need to be connected. Most of your tuning will be done on HP tuners. And thanks for staying with us throughout this Camaro install video. If you have any questions, feel free to shoot us an email or give us a call. We'll be happy to answer for you. And uh, stay safe out there.